Chapter 31 Is there another computer? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios almost none of them present had heard this news. Especially Cheng Wan and Lu Xiaoying. Li Yuhan was surprised. The campus. The campus bell is a repeater. Her results should be quite good if she could come to our school. What trouble did she make so that the school didn't want her anymore? She has a poor grade because she skips class every day and fights. She's almost the last in school. Later, the teacher stopped caring about her. She could come to first middle school because. Mu Ying looked at Qin Ran's direction and lowered her voice. Anyway. Sigh, I won't say more about the specific reasons. For after she finished speaking, Li Yuhan thought deeply and looked anxious to gossip. Mu Ying couldn't help but look in the direction of Cheng Wan and Lu Xiaoying. Cheng Wan leaned quietly on the door, his expression relaxed while playing with his mobile phone. He had good dot looking hands, long fingers, and clean fingertips. His knuckles were raised as he pinched his phone. Six his eyebrows were slightly down, and it was still obvious he was looking in the direction of Qin Ran. He didn't even care what she was talking about. As for Lu Xiaoying, his hand was on the car window and he was chuckling. Master Wan, I didn't expect Qin Ran to be so cool. The reaction of the two was beyond Mu Ying's expectations. Mu Ying couldn't tell what they felt, so she just pursed her lips and stood there. Nine inch bring the bag back to my aunt. I bought it last night and didn't have time to bring it back. You can help me. Qin Ran returned and gave the bag to Mu Nan. After listening to this sentence, Mu Nan frowned. He wanted to say something, but he had always been quiet, so he just silently took it and turned around. Mu Ying didn't dare to look at Qin Ran. She whispered, Cousin, I'm going. Three after Mu Nan and her left, Qin Ran got into the car, but the car didn't get to start. A little girl ran out of the bubble tea shop. Because she ran fast, her face was flushed, and she handed over a cup of bubble tea. Qin Ran, thank you for helping me to work overtime last night. Qin Ran leaned on the back of the chair and said without much energy, it's nothing. The little girl hurried back to work again. Cheng Wan was sitting in the passenger seat. He leaned on the back of the chair and looked in the rear dot view mirror. She was holding the bubble teacup and her complexion had improved a lot, but her spirit was still weak. You work part dot time at the bubble tea shop too. Qin Ran poked the straw in and nodded. Cheng Wan raised his eyes. Are you short of money? He thought of how Ning Qing had been decked out in famous brands. He didn't know the details of her family, but Ning Qing didn't look like she came from a family with a lack of money. Yeah. Qin Ran nodded without any psychological burden. One Cheng Wan didn't speak. The Lin family. The Lin family and Lin Jinxian were at home tonight. Qin Yu had come back home directly as there was no self.study for her. First middle school's self.study was primarily for the boarding students, so she was freer. At the dinner table, the Lin family mainly focused on three things. One was about Lin Jinxuan's recent busy work, the other was when Lin Wan would return to Beijing, and the last was the current situation of Qin Yu's learning. Is Feng Ci back? Lin Qi chatted with Lin Jinxian casually. Lin Jinxian nodded. This time our project is in Yuncheng. He will come back naturally. Lin Qi patted his shoulder. Do well with him. The Feng family was a real prestigious family in Yuncheng. His father was the mayor, and the Lin family had a normal relationship with the Feng family. Even Lin Qi couldn't see the mayor easily. However, Lin Jinxian had a close relationship with Feng Ci. Lin Wan also laughed. She gave Lin Jinxian a piece of vegetable and said in a gentle voice, the Feng family has a deep foundation. There won't be any big problems if the two of you cooperate. One Lin Jinxian bowed his head. I know. 
After talking about Lin Jinxian, the conversation turned to Qin Yu again. Lin Wan asked this question in more detail and learned that Qin Yu had done well in her exams, so she naturally was eager to praise her. This was an ordinary test. It's useless to take ninth place. Qin Yu smiled and spoke humbly, but the pride in her voice couldn't be hidden. You're just being humble. Lin Qi smiled happily. The atmosphere on the table was very good. Ning Qing sat next to Lin Qi, gave Lin Qi a piece of meat and smiled. Then, she called Aunt Zhang to bring another bowl of soup. She did it all with the aura of a hostess. Lin Wan glanced at her and put down her chopsticks. You are, I heard that your elder sister is also in first middle school. How is she doing? Lin Wan asked with a smile. Ning Qing's face froze. Qin Yu's expression remained unchanged. I'm not in the same class as her, so I don't know clearly. She paused. But after seeing her score of 30 in English, I think sister just came here and might not be used to our school's learning methods. It'll be fine once she gets used to it, dot ha, Lin Wan picked up a paper towel and wiped the corners of her mouth, her voice dull. The education in Ninghai village is really bad. You are, thank God you grew up in our Lin family. One Ning Qing's expression was even worse. After the meal, the people at the table went to do their own things. Qin Yu went upstairs to practice the violin. The violin score was still in front of her, and she played it several times. Although the song was good, Qin Yu really couldn't pull off the emotions behind it. She sat on the chair for a long while and locked the score in the drawer again. Although the song was good, it was too time-consuming to practice it, so she didn't plan to practice it again. Two the study room was also on the second floor. When are you going to return to Beijing? Lin Qi poured a cup of tea for Lin Wan and said gently. Lin Wan pressed her temples, looking tired. Two days later. Just know when you have to leave. Lin Qi nodded. Lin Wan took up the teacup and took a sip. About teacher Wei, I listened to the violin played by Yua yesterday, and I think she basically only plays songs that everyone already knows. She's still young. Lin Qi laughed. She can't compose yet. Teacher Wei likes apprentices with their own spirits. This kind of popular music can't impress him. I'll settle the quota and let Yua concentrate fully on composing. There's still some time left, it's completely doable. Lin Wan put down her teacup and said slowly, I'll take her to Beijing for a few days. Old master would surely like it. Just as you have planned. Lin Qi had no opinion. For so many years, he also regarded Qin Yu as his biological daughter. The atmosphere on both sides was good. Ning Qing, who was walking into the room with her mobile phone, was iron.blue, on the other hand. Lin Wan indeed played her weight at night. When Lin Wan came back, Aunt Zhang and the rest all basically revolved around her. Ning Qing was uneasy. She pulled out a phone number in the phone book and pressed it directly. Lu Xiaoying continued to order meals at NU Hotel in the evening. Qin Ran wanted to thank the two for their warm help at noon in the evening but didn't expect that Lu Xiaoying didn't give her the opportunity to at all. Cheng Wan only asked her to sit and take a good rest, and then took his thermometer to measure her temperature. When he saw that her fever was almost gone, he poured her a glass of water and then sat down on the sofa. Qin Ran took a sip. It still had a touch of sweetness. Noon hadn't been an illusion. She felt inexplicably better. She held the cup and watched Cheng Wan and Lu Xiaoying. Although these two were capitalists, they were simply too good as bosses. Since they didn't let her work, Qin Ran wanted to make it up in other ways. She sniffed and looked at Cheng Wan, wanting to say something when her cell phone happened to ring. It was Ning Qing's voice. It sounded irritable, and it seemed to be suppressing some anger that had nowhere to go, so she took the liberty to vent all of it onto her. Qin Ran, why aren't you learning well even in first middle school? 
how could you score 30 points, I can't even buy over any school with this score. Do you know that at today's dining table? Qin Ran had very little contact with Ning Qin. Her head had already been throbbing, and a sudden sharp voice made her veins tighten and she coughed two times before saying emotionlessly, if you don't have any other damn thing to say, I'm hanging up. If possible, Ning Qin would also like to ignore her, but she was her own daughter. Outsiders would always point at her and say, look, that's Ning Qin's daughter, the last place. She breathed a sigh of relief. From this week on, I've found a few teachers for you. You can go to tuition classes obediently. You will go once you're on vacation, and don't make trouble everywhere. She didn't finish talking. Because Qin Ran had hung up the phone. Putting away the phone, Qin Ran leaned back and tilted her head. Her good dot looking eyes were squinted and looked quite arrogant. Do you have another computer? Chapter 32 Attack Together, Save Time You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Cheng Wan didn't ask her what she wanted to do. He just put down his things and brought a computer over to her. When Qin Ran took over the computer, he asked, who was it, sounded like a bitch. One Qin Ran's cold fingertips swiped across the computer. The corners of her lips weren't smiling and revealed a bit of casual coldness. This matter wasn't complicated to explain, so Qin Ran explained why she had come to Yunqing succinctly. It was quite brief, but Cheng Wan understood the main parts. He looked at Qin Ran for a while and then said, Your mother is your biological mother. Qin Ran's voice sounded wrong and she was still weak and coughing. Cheng Wan stopped looking at his documents and kept staring at her to check on her condition. He frowned at the thought of how Ning Qin didn't even ask about him. One this sentence made Qin Ran smile and she was quite happy. Yeah, she is. Qin Ran's USB flash drive was with him. She stood up, looked around the room, and took the computer to the tatami mat near the window. Cheng Wan's computer had a spy screen, and this place was a dead end. Unless he stood behind her, he wouldn't be able to see what she was doing. She opened the USB flash drive and started work casually. She hadn't taken orders for more than a year. One Cheng Wan was preparing for his Sunday operation, but he still couldn't calm down. He looked at the words he had written down on the paper. He knew them, but he couldn't pierce together the meaning. He tilted his head back and looked at the girl sitting on the tatami mat. She was still wrapped in a shirt, and her face didn't look as relaxed as usual. Her expression was a little more serious than he had ever seen before. He squinted slightly and didn't know what she was doing but her whole body seemed to be glowing. He moved his hands. After a short while, he turned to find a cup, poured a cup of warm water, and put a few pills beside it. While he did it, Qin Ran's eyes didn't even deviate slightly. After work at this time, Lu Xiaoying went back to the gate of the yard and picked up the meal that Enyu Hotel had just delivered. He originally wanted to call Qin Ran but was interrupted by Cheng Wan's gaze. Then we'll eat later. Lu Xiaoying placed the two wooden boxes on the table. Master Wan, have you arranged for the surgery on Sunday? He came over and looked at the notebook in Cheng Wan's hand. Damn it, it was still the same as at noon. Lu Xiaoying was curious. Master Wan, why haven't you finished it? Cheng Wan glanced at him. His good dot looking fingers hit the table and he said concisely, no time. Lu Xiaoying. Dot. Qin Ran finished her work. It was already ten minutes after dinner. She ate and took her medicine, before looking around the school medical office and tidying the things that needed to be tidied. As soon as she was about to leave, her sleeves were tugged on by Cheng Wan. If it had been somewhere else, or someone else, she would probably frown or break their hands impatiently. What's the matter? At this time, Qin Ran's mood was rather good. She turned sideways, looked at Cheng Wan, and narrowed her eyes casually. Bring this cup. The cup is new and no one has used it. 
Cheng Wan passed her the thermos cup she had just drunk from. He was a little lazy and his eyes were dark. He paused for a while before saying, You're a girl, don't always drink cold water. When Qin Ran came to the school's medical office, she always carried a bottle of mineral water or a can of cola. Cheng Wan had observed this many times. She was his patient and was ill, so it was only right to be concerned about her. Qin Ran took it and glanced at it. The white cup looked pretty. Cheng Wan touched her fingertips, and after the temperature dropped, her fingers became cold. He quietly retracted his hand. Thank you. Qin Ran waved her hand at Cheng Wan. Cheng Wan looked at her leaving figure, then raised his hand in a complicated way and looked at it for a long time. My master Wan, what are you looking at? We should go. Lu Xiaoying came over. Cheng Wan retracted his hand, got up, and looked expressionless. Let's go. Qin Ran returned to class to study by herself. Her evening self.study was reading a book and copying papers. She put away the notes that Mu Nan had given her and began to sort through her papers. She put the test papers one by one from small to large according to the score, and then put it back in satisfaction. She began to look through a foreign book that had not been translated. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I love Dao Du's new album, and it will be on sale tomorrow morning at nine. Lin Siren's voice beside her was still very loud, even if it was deliberately suppressed. Fortunately, classes had already ended, so her voice wasn't abrupt. She shook Qin Ran's arm. Ran Ran, look at him, he's so handsome. Qin Ran glanced at the screen. It was a magnified young man in a black punk outfit with thick eye makeup that looked very casual on him. Dot his eyebrows looked pretty and were considered very outstanding in the entertainment industry. One inch do you know him, he is. Lin Siren was very excited to popularize her idol to Qin Ran. Yen Shi, Qin Ran propped her legs up and said casually. Ran Ran, are you a fan too? Lin Siren brightened up. Qin Ran was expressionless. No, one Lin Siren wasn't disappointed and was very enthusiastic about selling her love for him to Qin Ran instead. In three years, he has become popular all over the country. The songs he sings are all magical. Qin Ran took out a lollipop, peeled it, and put it directly into her mouth. Lin Siren. Dot. After self.study class, Qin Ran and Lin Siren returned to the bedroom. Their bedroom was at the end of the corridor, so they passed by Pan Mingyue's bedroom. Pan Mingyue had returned early and had cooked a bottle of boiling water. A pretty girl blocked her dormitory door. Pan Mingyue, why did you add 20 points to your college entrance examination? Are you a minority? The girl had a shawl in her hair and squinted at Pan Mingyue. Pan Mingyue lowered her head and didn't talk nor look at her. Forget it. Jiang Han, don't make a mess, the host is coming. Another girl held the talking girl. Jiang Han put aside her hand and was a bit arrogant. Why can't I talk? She and Su Yaoguang are always about 20 points apart from each other, and Teacher Li already said that she added 20 points and has a good chance of getting champion. Pan Mingyue, tell us yourself. We're all humans, are you one class higher? Several people stood in the way and blocked the side road. Several passing girls didn't dare to lift their heads and just walked past them. Qin Ran didn't go around them. She lowered her head and said concisely, make way, it's troublesome. Her eyes were pale and reddish, and she weighed the cup in her hand. Jiang Han froze. What did you say? This Jiang Han was quite a troublemaker in first middle school. Seeing this scene, the girls who wanted to get water in the corridor quickly returned to their dormitory. Unless they were passing by, no one dared to step forward. She was Su Yaoguang's number one fangirl and didn't dare to provoke Qin Yu, so she could only express her anger in other ways. Qin Ran looked up and smiled, but her tone wasn't very good, so the evil spirits in her eyes almost rushed out. 
It was suppressed again and she closed her eyes. I said, make way. Good dogs don't block the way. Jiang Han looked at the girl who dared to talk to her in this way. She was unfamiliar, with white skin and a good. Looking face. It was very hot, but she was wearing a jacket and even had her clothes pulled up high like an obedient student. Lin Siren didn't respond. She looked at Qin Ran and didn't even have time to say anything. There were many small enterprises in the school and Jiang Han was naturally from such a family too. Her father was an upstart and had donated a library. Her results were rather good as well, so she was in class 3.1. One inch which class are you from? Don't you know who I am? Jiang Han's eyes became amused and a little disdainful. The few girls behind her surrounded her instantly and she sneered. You're looking for death, Qin Ran let Lin Siren take her cup. Lin Siren came back to her senses. Ran Ran, what are you doing? Don't rush. In the school, few girls dared to provoke Jiang Han. Qin Ran reached out and took off her school uniform jacket. Inside was a white tea dot shirt. She put the school uniform jacket in Lin Siren's hand, squinted, and said calmly, We'll attack together and save time. Chapter 33 Who are you showing off to? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Qin Ran rolled her sleeves and narrowed her eyes slightly as she looked at Jiang Han, chuckling lowly. Suddenly, the goosebumps on Jiang Han's body stood up and felt instinctively dangerous. Her pupils shrank and she tried to take a step back, wanting to escape. However, before Jiang Han could take a step back, her whole person was strangled by a huge force, and she was severely thrown against the wall by her neck. There was almost no strength in the body. Qin Ran held on to Jiang Han with one hand, stretched her legs and knocked the other two girls to the ground. She looked at the last girl, raised an eyebrow, and smiled. Do you want a taste of this too? Two girls and boys of this age were unscrupulous in their actions, and in Qin Ran's eyes, they were just easy targets. Stop fighting. Behind, someone pulled her sleeve. It was Pan Mingyue. Qin Ran didn't speak. She just looked down at Jiang Han expressionlessly. Jiang Han's eyebrows were cold and sweaty. The girl in front had her hair tied up, and a few strands of hair fell to the side of her face and stopped at her mouth. Her eyes were pretty, but her pupils looked blood-stained. Her stare was scary and made people feel goosebumps. Everyone in the other bedroom knew about this change. Wu Yan was also a little scared, but she glanced at Jiang Han and the others, stood by the door and said, Qin Ran, don't go crazy. I'm going to find the host. Qin Ran opened the next door. Pa, when the door hit the wall, it bounced back fiercely with a loud noise. Not only Wu Yan was afraid to speak, but the entire floor was also silent. Qin Ran was a little taller than Jiang Han. She let go of the hand that was against her neck, lowered her head slightly, and smiled softly. After a long while, under Jiang Han's frightening and somewhat strange eyes, she let go of her hands and slowly put down her rolled. Up sleeves. She went to get her cup back from Lin Siren. Still with bloodshot eyes, before she left, she turned slightly and smiled wickedly at Jiang Han. Mind your own business and eat more. She took the cup and walked to her bedroom without any rush. The remaining girls standing in the corridor were like frightened white rabbits, jumping to make way for her. Almost all the girls in the hallway shrank into the bedroom door and watched her enter the room. She was the first girl who dared to mess with Jiang Han. For a few minutes, none of them were able to come to their senses and were extremely quiet. After Lin Siren took a shower, she didn't see Qin Ran in the dormitory. She frowned and didn't see her until she came to the balcony. She saw Qin Ran sitting on the balcony with her back to her, her legs dangling slightly. Lin Siren was so scared that her heart suddenly stopped. Ran Ran. 
Chin Ran had heard her noise and she squinted slightly, her eyes narrowing. What are you panicking for? There was still an unlit cigarette in her mouth, and she dangled her legs carelessly. The night scene soaked through her as she thought about something. Lin Siren didn't respond. Chin Ran suddenly laughed in a low voice. She stretched out her hand, jumped back, and threw the cigarette into the trash bin. Let's go back to sleep. Lin Siren touched her heart and breathed a sigh of relief. Ran Ran, you were so impressive. She was referring to what had happened just now. She had really never seen any girl make Jiang Han shudder to that extent. Qin Ran went to the bedroom, her hands behind her head. She didn't say anything. It took a long time for Lin Siren to hear her four words, thin and cold. I'm not a god. A villa somewhere in Yuncheng. Cheng Wan was holding a knife and studying the mannequin. He heard Lu Xiaoying opening the door in a panic. Master Wan, Master Wan, there's. There's. Cheng Wan turned expressionlessly, pointed his thin scalpel at Lu Xiaoying and tilted his head. Can you afford my mannequin if you break it? Lu Xiaoying was silent. Young Master Cheng had spent five million customizing human body models, and even the blood vessels had been simulated clearly. He could afford it, but whether or not he could find someone to help customize the human body models was another thing. He paused, then said, the order was returned. One Cheng Wan retracted his dagger. A gust of wind raised the corner of his shirts gently. Why didn't you say so earlier? One Lu Xiaoying. Dot. Although it was senior year, first middle school didn't have supplementary classes during the holidays. They had it previously, but after some students' parents reported it to the Education Bureau, they stopped entirely. In the past two days, Qin Ran was free except for when she went for her part-time job at the bubble tea shop. Early Saturday morning, Ning Qin called her several times in a row, but she didn't answer. Qin Ran took her backpack and went directly to the hospital to see Chen Shulan. Chen Shulan lived in the VIP ward of the hospital and had special care. When Qin Ran arrived, her aunt was feeding Chen Shulan soup. Mu Ying was sitting on a side chair playing with her mobile phone. Mu Nan sat on the other side cutting an apple with a fruit knife. Qin Ran went in immediately but stood outside the glass window looking at Chen Shulan for a while. Chen Shulan had married her grandfather early but had her children late. She had her first child in her thirties. She was now close to eighty. As people get older, their organs begin to degenerate, and various diseases would then appear. Qin Ran had ways to help Ning Wei's legs, but in the face of natural death, illnesses, and various organ failures, even Qin Ran was helpless. Qin Ran opened the door and went in. Chen Shulan's spirit improved immediately. Ran Ran, I asked your mother to bring these things. Keep them. Chen Shulan's fingers were shaking and unstable as she took out a pile of papers from under the pillow and handed it to Qin Ran. Qin Ran looked down. The pile of papers was notes that she had crumpled into the trash before. All written casually. She didn't expect her grandmother to pick it up and keep it well. Seeing that she had no reaction, Chen Shulan couldn't help but pull Qin Ran's hand and shove the papers into her hand. Chen Shulan was old and had a bad memory, but she still remembered how the Imperial Capital's teacher had looked at these notes. Like they were a gem. If it had been another parent, they would definitely have forced their child to learn. But Chen Shulan was different. She would be happy even if Qin Ran didn't get married, so all those were just trivial matters. Cousin, what's this? When Mu Ying saw Qin Ran coming, she put her phone back and came over. One she only saw the paper. And couldn't see clearly what was written. Qin Ran rolled up the papers and stuffed it into her school uniform pocket. Nothing. She said lightly. Although Mu Ying was curious, she didn't ask much and just felt strange. 
They accompanied Chen Shulan at the hospital till noon, and only when Qin Ran left to work at the bubble tea shop did she leave too. On Saturday, Qin Yu still came to school to practice the violin. Dot Qin Yu had a performance on the school anniversary. On weekdays, the driver usually sent her. This time, however, Lin Wan wanted to see Qin Yu off personally, so he followed along, and Ning Qin could only accompany them. One the car could enter the campus on Saturday. But when they passed by the door, Qin Yu wanted to drink milk tea. All three got out of the car. The driver came down to queue for Qin Yu to buy milk tea. Qin Yu took Lin Wan's arm, smiled and introduced her to the current situation in first middle school. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw a familiar figure at the bubble tea shop. Qin Yu was stunned for a moment. Comment Lin Wan noticed that Qin Yu had a strange expression. What's wrong? She asked, following her gaze. Mom, why is sister here? Qin Yu glanced at Ning Qin. Ning Qin had already seen her. She was pale and pursed her lips, before striding over to the bubble tea shop with frosty eyes. Qin Ran leaned on the bar side, her head lowered and calmly putting a cup of bubble tea on the table. Ning Qin clenched her fingers tightly. She clutched her 30,000 yuan bag and gritted her teeth. Qin Ran, what are you doing? Did I not give you money? Chapter 34 Elder Su's successor you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios behind her, Qin Yu stood at a loss beside Lin Wan. Lin Wan's face looked inexplicable, and she asked, You are, is this your sister? Yeah, I didn't expect my sister to be here. Qin Yu blinked and sighed. Inside the bubble tea shop, Qin Ran didn't even look up. She took a new teacup and said directly, Don't disturb me at work at the mention of this, Ning Qin folded her arms tighter. Work. What are you working for? Have I treated you badly? Ning Qing's turned pale, but at the thought that Lin Wan was still outside, she swallowed her saliva and suppressed her anger. I've arranged tuition for you, yet you didn't go. In the end, you're working part dot time here. Qin Ran, who are you showing off to? Have I neglected you? Three inch with your grades, even Z High School might not want you. Now that you're in first middle school, why can't you just study properly? Tidy up your things and go to tuition with me, Ning Qing said, and when Qin Ran ignored her, she turned to another part dot timer and said indiscriminately, where is your boss, let him come over. Her tone was arrogant and high. The other part dot timer had never seen this happen before. She looked at Ning Qing's branded stuff, and then at Qin Ran, who wore her school uniform jacket every day. She was a little awkward but felt like Ning Qing wasn't easy to provoke. Qin Ran, just go back with your mother. The part dot timer tried to persuade. It's your mother, after all, she must be doing it for your good. How can there be hatred between mother and daughter? My little son can't even attend first middle school. You're in there but are still so ungrateful. Someone felt sour. Children these years have bad grades and don't even attend tuition, then they come to work instead. You're so young and yet such a troublemaker. Sigh, it must be hard on your mother. Three several onlookers pointed out one by one. In their traditional view, parents could have no fault. The surrounding finger dot pointing seemed to give Ning Qin courage. She reached out to pull Qin Ran. Her hand just reached out. Snap, a bony joint with a sharp hand knocked her down. Tu Ning Qing looked up immediately and saw a clean and handsome face. The teenager was fresh and his movements weren't rude. He said calmly, if you wanted to control her, shouldn't you have done it ten years ago? Ning Qing's mind was emptied for a moment. Wei Zihang didn't plan to just let it go. He bit his cigarette, turned around, and pointed at Ning Qing. This person got divorced when her daughter was seven years old, and then she married a wealthy man. She refused to bring her daughter back. 
In twelve years, she never came back once. Do you guys still think she is a mother? Two inch butt. If I didn't care about her, why would I help her study in first middle school? Speaking of this, I want to ask more. Wei Zihan looked at Ning Qing and suddenly smiled, but his eyes were cold. I remember that Principal Su already let Sister Qin attend first middle school one year ago. Aunt Ning, I want to ask you, why do you have to make it seem like Sister Qin could only attend school because of your family? There was silence at this moment. For a while, Ning Qin didn't know what to say. She was pale, her head was empty, and she acted mechanically. Wei Zihang chuckled. Speaking of that, Sister Qin is already so big and you've never even taken care of her before. Forget that you took advantage of her, now you're still pointing at her and criticizing her. At this moment, the onlookers no longer looked at Qin Ran. Instead, they were all pointing at Ning Qin. Having a step.father meant having a step.mother. Which biological mother wouldn't go to see her daughter for 12 years? Ning Qing didn't expect things to turn to this. In these 12 years, she had never experienced such a dilemma. Everyone was looking and pointing at her while gossiping, making her feel uncomfortable. Soon someone recognized the 30,000 yuan bag in her hand and then they started discussing Qin Rant's clothes. Ning Qin saw someone hold up her mobile phone and lowered her head and quickly walked out of the tea shop. Qin Rant's expression remained unchanged from beginning to end. Another clerk recognized Wei Zihang and lowered her head in horror, afraid to say a word. Her hands holding on to money were shaking. Ning Qin went out. Lin Wan smirked. Ning Qin clutched her handbag and didn't look at Lin Wan. How did my sister know him? Qin Yu whispered. Why? Lin Wan only tilted her head slightly and let Qin Yu take her arm. Qin Yu looked at Wei Zihang's direction in a complicated way. Wei Zihang was well known and hardly anyone dared to mess with him, but they all discussed his appearance in private. That's the famous school bully of Z High School next door. They don't do honorable business, and I heard that he's even related to the underworld, Qin Yu whispered. Ning Qing's expression was even worse. Lin Wan glanced at Ning Qing, smiled slightly and nodded her head. She raised her eyebrows and spoke thoughtfully, Viewer, that person said that Qin Ran managed to attend first middle school not because of your father. Qin Yu also looked at Wei Zihang's direction. Her hands paused and she returned to her senses and said, Back then, first middle school didn't accept sister. We all know how her grades are. But I heard that Principal Su went to Ninghai village to help the poor out before and three years ago, an incident happened there. I guess Principal Su took pity on her. As soon as Lin Wan heard this, she thought for a moment and didn't ask anymore. Qin Ran didn't look like someone who was associated with first middle school's principal. They went to see Qin Yu's performance. Qin Yu's charisma was really good. She was young yet played the violin well. Lin Wan also knew music and naturally understood it. She would return to Beijing in a few days. She thought about it and pulled Qin Yu aside after her performance. Aunt. Qin Yu said in surprise. Lin Wan pondered for a while and said, I found a violin teacher for you, an international master. I can't tell you his name for the time being, but he has a high apprenticeship and likes students with their own spirits. It's best that you take some original music to him. A few months later, you will have a chance to perform in front of him, do you understand? 3. Qin Yu didn't respond. Her heart was beating like a drum. What was Lin Wan's identity now? The family she married into was also a little famous in Beijing. How amazing would the violin teacher be if even she was full of high praises? Qin Yu was well aware of her foundation. This kind of teacher was sure to be demanding. She could write her own music, but it might not be what he wanted. One inch ewer. Qin Yu didn't speak for a while, and Lin Wan called her again. Qin Yu was a little absent-minded. She remembered the musical notation locked by her in the drawer. 
After a while, she looked up, her eyes glowing like a torch, and said certainly, Aunt, thank you. I won't let you down. Three she clenched her fists. The bubble tea shop wasn't far away. Cheng Wan bit a cigarette in his mouth. He didn't light it and his face was expressionless. His eyes were droopy and frosty. Lu Xiaoying, you'd better have something urgent. Lu Xiaoying looked at Cheng Wan with an expression of resentment. How anxious could he be? The beauty had already been saved by the hero. If you were in a TV show you would be the second male lead. For the idiot who only knew how to give. The one that couldn't survive past three episodes. One he wanted to vomit, but there was something more strange now. Lu Xiaoying turned and repeated what had happened to Cheng Wan. Then, he tooted. Master Wan, it's been so many years and so many people have fallen into Elder Su's hands. But when have you seen Elder Su being so compassionate to give a letter of recommendation? Elder Su said last time that he had found a successor. Do you remember? Chapter 35 Touched Hands You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Cheng Wan did not speak. He looked towards the milk tea store, eyes clear and slightly narrowed. It wasn't clear what he was thinking. Lu Xiaoying repeated himself, thinking that he wasn't listening. Only then did Cheng Wan turn towards him, brows furrowed. Who's he? One Lu Xiaoying was speechless. He missed the point. Cheng Wan hung his head lower with the cigarette in his mouth. The huge murder case three years back, Boss Su was around. Lu Xiaoying was stunned and confused. What have you found? Speculation. Cheng Wan puffed a ball of smoke as his eyes deepened. Boss Su isn't that sympathetic. Something's been off since he arrived at Ninghai village. So, regarding the successor. Lu Xiaoying looked up all of a sudden. Cheng Wan smiled. Two possibilities. One, it's a smokescreen. Given Ba Su's status and background, even if he does have a successor in mind, it's not likely that he'd pass it on to an outsider at the expense of the Su family's interests. Two, there actually is a successor that he's willing to give up huge interests for. He made the move to look for us and even mentioned it. He's probably asking for my help. If this is the case, the capital city might undergo reshuffling, and by then this successor might not even make it out of it. It indeed is much easier to keep someone alive in the Qing family than in the Su family. Lu Xiaoying hadn't thought of this point, he'd never been good at deducing such complex issues. He smiled. Then, something's wrong with this. Qin Ran should be that lucky survivor. Ba Su couldn't possibly have his eyes on someone like her, right? Cheng Wan did not respond. There was still a key point he couldn't figure out. What role did Qin Ran play exactly in all of this? It was very odd that someone like Ba Su would personally give a student a recommendation letter. He puffed some more smoke and looked towards the milk tea store. If he really has his eye on someone as a successor, things are going to change drastically. Considering Ba Su's status, Lu Xiaoying only just realized how important this matter was. He looked up as if wanting to say something more, but saw that Cheng Wan had already entered the store. It was the weekend, but the store wasn't especially crowded. Qin Ran had Wei Zihang wait by the side. She placed a cup of milk tea on the table and smelt a familiar refreshing scent with hints of peppermint. One she looked up and saw Cheng Wan with one hand on the bar counter. He was tall and often had to look down at people. Even with his default expression, his gaze carried an air of oppression. He looked at the long list of menu items and furrowed his brows. It was evident that he hadn't drunk from such stores before. Give me a cup of something nice. He took his card out to swipe for payment. Qin Ran looked at it and guessed that Master Cheng had probably never lived like a normal human being. Everyone either paid with cash or by digital payment, who would use a limited edition card for such a small amount. 
one she pressed his hand down. It's on me. Cheng Wan did not respond to that. He simply looked down at his hand and her fair, slender fingers. She had a beautiful hand, except that her fingers were not much cared for. Her fingertips were cool, but somehow it felt warm against his skin. He looked up politely and saw that Qin Ran had her eyes on the cups and toppings to prepare his drink. She looked so focused, with one hand holding the cup and the other busy with getting the toppings. She stirred the fruit tea with a spoon, but without touching the walls of the cup. The cup was clear and had a logo printed on it. The fruit tea filled about two dot thirds of the cup and was then carefully topped with freshly whipped cream. Finally, some cocoa powder was sifted over it. Chin Ran was always serious and conscientious when she did something she deemed important. She usually appeared cold and unapproachable, but whenever she was engrossed in an activity, the armor that she usually donned instant fell apart. Even her lashes were pointing downwards at a perfect angle. Thank you, he said as he received the two cups of tea. As he walked to the side, he subconsciously tightened his grip on the cup. One asterisk asterisk the phone household. Mingyue, you should eat more. How's school, are you getting used to staying on campus yet? Feng Lucheng scooped a lot of food into Pan Mingyue's bowl. Thank you, Uncle Feng, Pan Mingyue quietly said. My classmates are all really nice. Your brother Feng is home too. In that case, don't return to school this weekend. Stay home and have Aunt whip up more delicacies for you. Feng Luqing smiled. He was usually quiet and shrewd, a man of few words. It seemed like he had given all his kindness and patience to this girl here. Madam Fong tossed her chopsticks on the table. I'm done eating. She then stormed upstairs in her heels. Fong C.I. furrowed his brows. Pan Mingyue tightened her grip on her chopsticks and smiled at Fong Luqing. Uncle Fong, I'll be having my exam soon. I should get back to school to do my revision. Your aunt is just like that. Feng Luqing looked at Pan Mingyue and sighed. Mingyue, you. Uncle, I'm done eating too. I'll go get my clothes. Pan Mingyue finished the food that Feng Luqing had scooped for her and headed upstairs too. Her room was pretty nicely decorated. As she opened the wardrobe, there weren't many clothes inside. The clothes were mostly from when she was younger. Feng Luqing was a man, after all. He didn't quite know how to take care of her in all aspects. However, he'd transfer money into her account every month, though she wouldn't touch a cent of it. But she did not mind. She took the clothes that were there and went downstairs. From a corner, she could hear Feng Xiai talking to Feng Luqing. Feng Xiai had put his chopsticks down too and was wiping his mouth with a napkin. Dad, it's not just mom who wants to know. I want to know too. Who exactly is Mingyue? Why did you just bring her home all of a sudden and treat her so well? Is she your bastard child from outside, or the daughter or your first love? Why are you just like your mom? Feng Luqing hurled the chopsticks. He looked at Feng Xiai sternly and said, Feng Xiai, don't you ever speak like this before Mingyue. She'd better not be your daughter. But I want to know, even if her parents are both deceased, she should have relatives who would take care of her. Why are you taking this upon yourself? Feng Xiai lit a cigarette. In the corner, Pan Mingyue held her head low. She went downstairs to say goodbye to Feng Luqing. Madam Feng had never liked her, but she'd never abused her either. Moreover, Feng Luqing was really treating her like she was his own. Be careful on your way. Feng Luqing cooled down immediately and spoke to her nicely. Feng Xiai watched as Pan Mingyue left. That's exactly it. You're way too nice to Mingyue, this isn't how you usually are. If you want mom to treat Mingyue better, then you'd better explain things to her. One asterisk asterisk the weekend passed very quickly. Monday's last period was a class meeting. Gao Yang spoke confidently about life lessons before taking a sip of tea. 
Is anyone volunteering to do up the minutes for today's meeting? Nobody raised their hands. In year three, nobody really wanted to take on extra responsibilities. Gao Yang casually appointed someone. Lin Siren, you write pretty well. You'll be in charge this time. Qin Ran was half dot leaning against the wall, still recovering from her flu. Her deskmate quietly agreed. She felt that her deskmate was simply too nice. After they were done with the miscellaneous discussions, there was only ten minutes of class time left. Gao Yang got them to do their revision. Qin Ran unwrapped a lollipop and put it in her mouth. She sucked on it as she read her materials. Out of nowhere, the loud clicking of high heels could be heard arriving at the front door of the ninth class. Then came a shrill lady's voice. Gao Yang, what's with Qin Ran from your class? What does she think she's doing in first middle school? Creating trouble. If she affects my class's studies, will she be able to compensate for disrupting their future? Chapter 36 Embarrassing yourself you are listening at novel full dot audio. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios people were always prejudiced by first impressions. Lee Irong's last recollection of Qin Ran was when Principal Su gave her that personal file. At that point, her impression of Qin Ran was ruined. When she heard reports of Qin Ran's fight with Jiang Han, she angrily rushed to the ninth class. Mr. Gao, I've already told you a long time ago that we can't keep this student. Is school a place where she can do as she please? Do you see other students acting like her? The whole class turned to look at her. Qin Ran calmly flipped through a book. She leaned slightly against the wall, slightly lowered her eyes and it seemed that she did not care at all. Ms. Li, this could possibly be a misunderstanding. Qin Ran is not an unreasonable student. We should clarify matters first. Gao Yang frowned slightly, walked to the door and adjusted his glasses. Misunderstanding. What sort of misunderstanding can there be? Mr. Gao, I'm just about done with you. If you don't want your class to learn well, I want my class to do well during the exams. I will look for the principal regarding this matter, but I have to trouble you to inform Qin Ran's parents to come over, Li Erong said as she looked at the girl who was sitting down and flipping through a book. Li Erong contemptuously remarked. Mr. Gao, you don't have to say anything. Save it for when you speak to the principal. Turning around, she walked off in her high heels. Gradually, some people started whispering in a low voice. What's going on? Qin Ran fought with Jiang Han. She doesn't seem like someone who would fight with others, someone whispered. What do you mean? Who do you think would look like someone who would get into a fight then? That's true. Haven't you heard? In the past when Qin Ran did something illegal, even the police were shocked. Really? What did she do? There was a commotion in the initially quiet classroom due to this matter. Didn't Jiang Han tell you why we fought? Qin Ran put down the book, stood up and looked at Li Erong with eyes blazing with anger. Three Li Erong did not expect her to speak and was slightly startled. She sneered. A fight is a fight. What's there to explain? You are right. There is nothing to explain. Ms. Li, do you care about your students? Qin Ran glanced at Gao Yang and did not give him a chance to speak first. Of course I care about my students. They all want to excel in their exams and get into a good school. Li Erong was slightly offended. Your excuses are all useless, Qin Ran. Today, I have no choice but to. A cell phone suddenly appeared in Qin Ran's hand and she threw it on the table. Who are you going to talk to? Principal Su. You don't have to look for him because he will be here soon. In reality, Li Erong was not really serious about looking for the principal. Principal Su was usually busy and many things in the school were managed by the vice. Principal. Looking for Principal Su was not easy. This was especially since many unknown visitors usually came to see Principal Su. 
these visitors either drove luxury cars or had red car plates and were very impressive. In recent years, the teachers and students of the school came to know that Principal Sue's background was probably not simple. It was as difficult to reach him as calling the hotline of the mayor. The ninth class fell silent. The students looked at Chin Ran in surprise. Li Erong was also stunned for a moment before saying with an angry expression, Do you think I will believe a lie that you casually threw out? I can also say that Principal Su is at my house now. What's with the ruckus? Before Li Erong could finish, a deep voice was heard. An old man slowly walked over with his hands behind his back. He hid his pair of sharp eyes behind his glasses. One Principal Su rarely appeared, so most of the students did not recognize him. However, his esteemed presence was not to be underestimated. Principal Su Li Erong and Gao Yang's hearts skipped a beat. Su Yaoguang could not help but look at Qin Ran. So this was the life.saving benefactor who was able to get his grandfather to call him here. Who exactly was Qin Ran? The ninth class was silent again. Li Erong paused and looked at Qin Ran. Gritting her teeth, she said, Principal Su, it's great that you're here. This transfer student just joined the school not long ago and is already stirring up trouble. Last night, she fought with Jiang Han, who is in my class, and disrupted the learning of my students. I am sure you know that our class has to focus on the exams and can't afford to be disrupted. Principal Su was still calmly looking at Qin Ran. Qin Ran lowered her eyes and seemed to be thinking about something. Not making a sound, her expression was indecipherable. Li Erong looked at her more scornfully. Now that Principal Su was here, why was she still silent? After Principal Su arrived, the class was quiet for a moment before a commotion broke out again. The voices of many girls were heard. I bet her act was exposed and she has nothing to say anymore. Out of everyone, she just had to fight with Jiang Han. And now Principal Su is really here. Jiang Han's results were not bad, and her father was a nouveau riche. The books in the school's library were all donated by her father. What act? She was the one who invited him here, she has the same surname as Qin Yu, so why is she so different from her? Most of the gossip came from the girls. Once Qin Ran joined, she became a celebrity in school. Every day after class, many people would look for her. If she were like Qin Yu, who had a good family background, good results and good looks, they would be accepting, but someone like Qin Ran just made them jealous. The classroom was filled with noise. Ms. Li, you said that you cared about the students in your class, so why don't you know that Jiang Han from your class has been threatening Pan Mingyue with violence? Qin Ran lifted her head, smiled and said quietly. You. Li Erong was shocked. There's no need to argue. You can take a look at the surveillance cameras that monitor the hallway of the girls' dormitory. Qin Ran turned to look at Li Erong and coldly said, You said that you care so much about the health and growth of your students, so I want to know why do you not care that Jiang Han has been insulting and threatening Pan Mingyue. Her last sentence made the entire ninth class stare at Li Erong. Li Erong's face gradually turned pale. Since it concerned Pan Mingyue, Principal Su became serious. He sternly said, Ms. Li, I have to check the surveillance cameras and get the police to investigate this. If it really is as Qin Ran said, violence in school cannot be tolerated. One how did this turn into school violence and involved the police? Since Qin Ran mentioned the surveillance cameras, it meant that she did not lie. Li Erong tried to adapt to the circumstances and quickly said, Principal Su, I apologize. I did not clarify things and did not know that this was related to Pan Mingyue. It's no use telling me this. Qin Ran is the one you should address. Principal Su calmly reminded her. Li Erong was pale with rage. Apologizing to a student, especially a student she looked down on, was a little humiliating. In the end, she braced herself and apologized to Qin Ran in front of the entire ninth class. 
Chin ran, I'm sorry for misunderstanding you. One inch that's not needed. Besides, I've heard that in the past that Ms. Lee was a righteous and good teacher who cared about her students. I didn't expect that you would be so corrupt and despise the poor and curry favor with the rich, Chin ran indifferently said. One a few boys in the ninth class could not help but burst into laughter. Li Erong did not want to stay a moment longer. She lowered her pale face and left. Today, she embarrassed herself. When she walked past Gao Yang, she directed her anger at him and viciously said, Mr. Gao, don't be so proud. Look at the trash in your class. I want to see how many of them will actually pass the college entrance examination. One the bell that marked the end of class sounded. Due to this conflict, the class was delayed for about eight minutes. Many people were already gathered outside the ninth class. Xiao Xing kicked a stool and stood up. Standing firmly on the ground, he arrogantly said, Qin Ran, what exactly happened? Do you need me to help you teach Jiang Han a lesson? The students in the ninth class who were gossiping about Qin Ran did not dare to say anything more. Qin Ran packed her books and said indifferently, no, after glancing at Qin Ran, Su Yaoguang took his books and said faintly, let's go. Qin Yu said that she will be practicing a new song tonight. Recently, he was obsessed with Qin Yu's new song, and Xiao Sheng also knew about it. As Qin Yu did not see Su Yaoguang and him downstairs, she went upstairs to wait for them. Seeing that a lot of people had gathered outside the ninth class and were talking about Qin Ran without noticing that she was there, Qin Yu could not help but pinch herself. She pursed her lips, looked up and sighed in worry. I heard from them that my sister got into trouble again. Chapter 37 Qin Ran is really like someone you are listening at novel full dot audio. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios' Su Yaoguang was as laconic as ever. He paused for a while before looking at Qin Yu. Quiet and taciturn. However, Xiao Xing suddenly tilted his head and looked at Qin Yu strangely. One Qin Yu squeezed her book tightly and smiled. Did I say something wrong? Getting into fights is nothing new for my sister. This is the truth. If she didn't cause trouble, a school would not have rejected her in the past. If Principal Su did not pity her, how could she be accepted here considering her personal record? Why are you so prejudiced against your sister? She's not like what you said. Today's problems were caused by Jiang Han from your class. Xiao Xing dribbled the basketball in his hand and rebutted her without much expression. Five Qin Yu was startled. She did not think that Xiao Sheng would speak to her like that. I'm going to the court to play basketball. I won't be going to the art building today, Xiao Sheng said to Su Yaoguang before dribbling his basketball away and rallying a few boys to the court. He did not apologize to Qin Yu. Su Yaoguang nodded. After Xiao Sheng left, he saw that Qin Yu was still in shock and slowly spoke. Principal Su is not a sympathetic person. Hmm, Qin Yu did not react. After a while, she pursed her lips and smiled. You're joking again. How do you know what sort of person Principal Su is like? Three after that, she hugged her books and quietly walked. Looking at the few boys in front who were playing basketball, Qin Yu felt very depressed. She was not very sure of Su Yaoguang's identity. That time, he defended her once in front of Wei Zihang, and she felt that someone who could stand up to Wei Zihang was not ordinary. However, in the past two years, Su Yaoguang stayed in the dormitory and dressed and ate simply. Due to this reason, even though his surname was Su, no one associated him with Principal Su. In contrast, Xiao Sheng was an obvious rich second dot generation heir. One the two of them walked into the art building. Qin Yu did not do anything else besides practicing hard on the violin. She seemed to spend almost ten hours every day on the violin. Now, her playing was smoother and clearer than the past. Two however, it still seemed to lack something. One nevertheless, a few members of the student union were shocked and very excited. 
Chin Yu, do you want to play this on the school founder's day? This also sounds amazing. I thought that the song to be placed on the school founder's day was already fixed. Chin Yu pursed her lips. I'm trying to find a mentor using this song. I composed it myself. Ten inch really. Everyone present was in awe and envy. Only Su Yao Guang was a little hesitant. Qin Yu's playing was great, but it seemed to be missing something. He frowned and could not say anything. What do you think? Qin Yu asked him. Su Yao Guang snapped out of his thoughts. It sounds really good. Once Qin Yu was done practicing, she went to the cafeteria to eat with Su Yao Guang. Since class ended late today, Qin Ran continued to stay in the classroom for a while. It rained quite heavily tonight. The rain and fog made everything misty, and even the houses nearby looked blurry. Lin Siren talked to Nye Fei about a poster and left with Nye Fei carrying an umbrella. She originally wanted to get an umbrella from the dormitory, but after seeing Pan Mingyue at the doorway of the ninth class with a black umbrella in hand, Lin Siren smiled and informed Qin Ran. At this time, the five of them shared two umbrellas as they walked across the school. It was not noisy and mostly quiet. For the school's medical office. As it suddenly rained, few people were in there now. Lu Xiaoying leaned back on his chair, propped both of his legs up and tapped his fingers on the table. He turned to look at Cheng Wan. Master Wan, President Jiang wants to see you. Cheng Wan was currently analyzing a rare illness. In response, he coldly turned a page and lazily replied without looking up. I will not see him. The operation was already over, so there was no reason to see him. Knowing that Cheng Wan was usually impatient with these things, Lu Xiaoying was not surprised. Looking outside the door, he said in concern, it's raining so heavily. I wonder if Qin Ran brought an umbrella with her. She just recovered from a fever. Cheng Wan paused and could not help but raise his head. The door of the school's sick bay was still open because Qin Ran had not arrived. Just as he spoke, they saw two people walking towards them. The girl who was holding an umbrella had short hair and wore glasses, so her face could not be seen clearly. She was actually quite attractive but looked a little boring compared to the girl beside her. Cheng Wan did not notice that his eyes were focused on the girl beside her. She was indifferent and cool. Her remarkable eyes were vivid in the fog and as bright as a landscape painting. Qin Ran had not spoken to Pan Mingyue at all from the beginning to the end. When Qin Ran walked into the sick bay, Pan Mingyue turned around to walk to the cafeteria. Looking at her back view, Lu Xiaoying felt that she was quite thin. He could not help but turn around and ask, Qin Ran, is that your classmate? Why don't you ask her to sit down? Look, her clothes are all wet. She has no time and needs to rush back to study. As her school jacket was wet, Qin Ran took it off. Lu Xiaoying remarked. What a nerd. Cheng Wan picked up the air conditioner remote control and raised the temperature by a few degrees. He continued to look at the case but did not focus. In the residual light in the kitchen, he saw Qin Ran. He appeared expressionless but was actually irascible. She was very unhappy, and her body language also showed that she was upset. Cheng Wan continued to look at his case. He leaned on the sofa and turned the pages carelessly. These two days, the three of them had developed a difficult relationship. Even after putting aside their differences, Lu Xiaoying did not feel defensive against Qin Ran. Two when Cheng Wan said that there was a shortage of people, Lu Xiaoying did not stop him. At this time, Lu Xiaoying invited Qin Ran to stay for dinner and Qin Ran could not reject him. There were many people in the cafeteria, and she rarely went there. She usually went out to look for shops with few people, it was quite time-consuming. As they were eating, Cheng Wan slightly lifted his feet. He saw that she looked distressed and could not help but ask, what's wrong? Oh. Qin Ran responded. The girl who was usually cool seemed out of character. 
she narrowed her eyes. There's a parent-teacher meeting this Saturday, but my grandmother is still in the hospital. Lu Xiaoying originally wanted to say something, but he suddenly remembered Ning Qing. She lowered her head and started to eat quietly. Cheng Wan looked at her for a while and could not help but smile. He usually looked lazy, and even his smile sometimes caused others to feel stressed. But as he smiled now, his eyes were clear like melted snow. It's not like your teacher knows your family, he said. Lu Xiaoying generously said, Qin Ran, I can be your dad. Five Qin Ran touched her chin, looked at Lu Xiaoying and considered this possibility. You're too young to be my dad. I can be your brother. It's settled, then. Lu Xiaoying straightened his clothes and was very pleased with himself. Then, he asked, is that student you were with in the same class as you? One Cheng Wan looked at him expressionlessly. The two of them discussed for a long time until they finished eating. Lu Xiaoying was still immersed in the conversation and suddenly felt Cheng Wan's gaze. Cheng Wan's face was as picturesque and kind. Why haven't I seen Lu Xiaoying, the resolute man, so enthusiastic before? However, Lu Xiaoying's legs went soft. He scratched his head again. Oh, Master Wan, Qin Ran is quite attractive, and I was drawn to her when I saw her. However, I really don't feel that way about her. He was not daring enough. Qin Ran spoke quite matter dot of dot factly. There was no one to take her to the parent dot teacher meeting on Saturday. However, Lu Xiaoying felt an inexplicable sadness. He had never cared about other people's feelings before, but during the past few days that Qin Ran was here, he did not mention her family at all. Even though she was responsible for both of their meals, he did not even look up her information. If one must know, to be the chef of both of them, she had to go through multiple rounds of interviews. Cheng Wan initially said it casually, but after hearing this, he recomposed himself and pondered slightly. Continue talking. Lu Xiaoying scratched his head, touched his earring and looked away. I just think that I feel an inexplicable closeness to her. How about we threaten her mother together since I have the time after eating? One inch closeness. Cheng Wan's face darkened and continued laughing. Ah, uh, no. Lu Xiaoying stood up as if a light bulb lit up in his head. I think she's like, dot. Chapter 38 Lin Jinchuan Surprise, the board you are listening at novel full dot audio. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios, ah, uh, no. Lu Xiaoying stood up as if a light bulb lit up in his head. I think she's like, that he pondered about it and suddenly thought of someone. Like my mother, Master Wan. Eight Lu Xiaoying guessed and didn't explain anything to Master Wan. He might even fly to Africa to mine in the evening. Two he had said she was like his mother casually, of course, but Lu Xiaoying couldn't remember where the specific sense of familiarity came from. One Cheng Wan continued to look at him expressionlessly. His eyes were as thick as ink, but Lu Xiaoying's scalp was about to explode. He cleaned up the bowls that the three had eaten. Then. Master Wan, I have to wash the plates. Cheng Wan retracted his gaze and nodded. His emotions couldn't be heard, and Lu Xiaoying sighed a breath of relief in the kitchen. He was still thinking about it, pondering over where the familiarity had come from. The Lin family. Qin Yu had been practicing the violin these two days, familiarizing herself with the melody. Lin Wan lived in Beijing. Qin Yu knew what status her aunt's married family had in Beijing. Although the Lin family was considered a wealthy family in Yuncheng, they weren't worth a mention in Beijing. Since she had this opportunity, she had to seize it no matter what. Besides attending school, Qin Yu ate quickly and was basically in the violin room the whole day. Downstairs, Lin Jinxian came back late today and found Qin Yu absent as he ate. Ning Qin smiled happily. You are is practicing in the violin room. I'll bring dinner to her later. She has improved a lot recently. 
Lin Jinxian didn't expect her to work so hard, but he had also heard Lin Wan talk about the teacher in Beijing, so it wasn't too surprising. After eating, he went to the study on the second floor. The door of the piano room wasn't closed. When he passed by the violin room, he heard a low voice come from inside. He had heard the violin played by Qin Yu, but had never heard this melody before. He paused. Qin Yu put down her violin, looked up, and found Lin Jinxian standing outside the door. She was a little surprised. Brother. Why are you back? Lin Jinxian shoved his mobile phone in his pocket, smiled softly, and said with a gentle voice, Ewer, your violin has made a lot of progress. Just. Use less emotion and practice more. Lin Jinxian had played the violin since young. Because he knew music as well, Lin Jinxian rarely praised her. At most, he would only nod and say it was not bad if she asked. This was the first time Lin Jinxian had praised her. Qin Yu pursed her lips and then smiled. Thank you, brother. This is a song I composed myself, but it needs improvement. Could I ask you if you have time? Seven inch yourself. Lin Jinxian was a little surprised. The song was cold and dark, and the structure was also a little big. It didn't seem to suit Qin Yu. Qin Yu nodded. It just needs improvement. It needs to be changed. The entire style doesn't suit you. Give me your music notations and I'll take a look. Lin Jinxian looked at Qin Yu in surprise. But it's impressive. Finally, he couldn't help but praise her. Qin Yu just tilted her head and smiled. Three asterisk asterisk the next day. In the second class in the morning, Qin Ran accompanied Lin Siren and Mia Fei to get colored chalk. One inch high school, too few people were willing to engage in the board. But Tuesday to Wednesday was too tight a time, so Lin Siren only found Nye Fei as a companion. Nye Fei was in charge of painting, and time was short. Lin Siren took Qin Ran together. While going to get the colored chalk, Lin Siren wanted Qin Ran to go with them. Wu Yan also went to the office to get English papers. It happened that Qin Yu was holding the chemistry papers, so Wu Yan was waiting for Qin Yu to walk together with her. When they were in the corridor, they saw Qin Ran and Lin Siren downstairs, walking from the comprehensive building to the teaching building, during which there was a sophomore boy who even gave her a love letter. Thinking of what happened yesterday, and how Xiao Sheng had yet to come to find her, Qin Yu pursed her lips and asked, seemingly nonchalant, How's Xiao Xing's relationship with your class new student? Qin Ran. At the mention of this, Wu Yan's expression was also very complicated. Xiao Xing covers for her very much. Nobody dares to go against Qin Ran in class. From the big jar of lollipops last time to Xiao Xing wanting to put Jiang Han and the others in place, class 3.9 didn't dare to even talk about Qin Ran. Oh. Qin Yu had expected it and didn't have any expression on her face. She wasn't familiar with Xiao Sheng and only knew him mainly because of Su Yaoguang. She didn't know why Xiao Sheng still followed behind Su Yaoguang even though he was obviously the rich second generation kid. One Qin Yu knew Xiao Sheng through Su Yaoguang. At this time, she didn't know what to say and remained silent. Wu Yan saw that Qin Yu was still staring at Qin Ran and the others, lowered her head and pouted as well. Her tone was sour as she said, that's our class board that nobody was willing to do. Old Gao found Lin Siren, and Nia Fei also knows how to draw. I don't know why Qin Ran is there with them, what does she even know how to do? Her words are like a dog's claws. I just hope she doesn't ruin our board review. Qin Yu was listening while her thoughts flew. They had two days to do up the board, and the first theme was regarding the high school entrance examination. Lin Siren wrote well. She used her spare time to post the content. Nia Fei would then paint it. On Tuesday, Lin Siren used noon for self.study, and there was time for self. Study during class 2. 
she wrote almost everything and left a blank space for Nye Fei to paint. At noon on Wednesday, Nye Fei drew a little and waited for self.study at night to do the rest. They studied from 6 to 10 in the evening. Four hours was enough. By the end of the evening, more than half of the board was still blank. Chin Ran sat on a stool and flipped through her books. She sat there leaning against the wall, lazily supporting her chin, waiting for Lin Siren to leave first. Before they both left, they saw Nye Fei walking over. Lin Siren put away the math papers and was very happy. Nye Fei, wait for me, I'll be done right away. In the past two days, she ate dinner with Nye Fei. Before she finished speaking, she saw Nye Fei bow to her guiltily. Siren, Chin Ran, I'm sorry, I can't continue to participate in the bulletin anymore. Someone just notified me that the student union has a reminder board and I must go there instead. Nye Fei was an officer in the art department of the student union, which was considered official business. Lin Siren also knew this, so she smiled forcefully. It's all right. When Nye Fei left, she sat down on the chair, looking sadly at the blank spaces on the poster. Ah, Ran Ran, what should we do? If Nye Fei had told her yesterday, Lin Siren could have found someone else. But it was already night, and some people weren't staying in school and didn't attend self.study, so Lin Siren wouldn't be able to find anyone. Lin Siren was annoyed. A girl from the front came over and lowered her voice. Siren, have you offended Chin Yu? The girl whispered. One Lin Siren was aggressive and shook her head directly. She had reminded Chin Ran before that Chin Yu mustn't be messed with, so how could she have committed that mistake? How could it be? Then I don't know. The girl glanced at Lin Siren. When I went to the comprehensive building in the afternoon, I saw Chin Yu asking Nye Fei to help draw the student union's board poster. Chin Yu had a good family background and her grades were good. Compared to Lin Siren, it wasn't difficult for Nye Fei to help Chin Yu instead. Even though she knew this, Lin Siren still frowned. Since she couldn't find anyone else to do the board, she could only do it herself. Chin Ran kept her phone in her pocket. She stood up, knocked on the table and frowned, her face shrouded in the shadows so that her expression couldn't be seen. Go and eat first. Her voice was also light. Lin Siren wasn't in the mood to joke around today, so she went to the cafeteria sadly. The cafeteria was far from the teaching building. It took almost ten minutes. Su Yaoguang was having dinner with Principal Su at night. He didn't go to the cafeteria and went back to the class to get his jacket. Today the door of the class was unlocked. He plugged the key back and walked toward the front door. The front office was opened. As soon as he reached out, he saw a person standing at the blackboard behind, drawing something on it. Su Yaoguang stopped subconsciously not far from the door, squinting his eyes, glancing over coldly. Chapter 39 Look. Look back. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Su Yaoguang knew that the board had to be redesigned. He was still in the student union and would only hand over his role in the next semester. Tomorrow morning, he was going to rate the scores with several members of the student union. Su Yaoguang looked at the stick figure on the blackboard. The lines were simple and smooth, and cartoon characters were being drawn. They looked vivid and remarkably true to life on the board. Su Yaoguang felt that the characters looked quite familiar, but he couldn't figure out who it was yet. The other party drew very quickly and seemed familiar with it. The characters were sketched out almost instantly. The coloring was also very bold. This was based on real painting skills. Su Yaoguang never thought that he would see this level of painting in the poster. One the person drawing was facing away from him. She was leaning sideways, wearing black headphones on her ears, and the headphone cord swayed slightly as she moved. She took a step back and seemed to be observing her painted characters. 
Su Yao Guang stood at the entrance of the classroom for a long time. When he stepped back, he saw her turn her face. The other party was absent-minded and played with the headphone cable in one hand while she held the chalk in the other. She admired her painting cynically. Her slightly squinted eyes were light and slow. Su Yao Guang's heart trembled a bit. It was Qin Ran. Most of his understanding of Qin Ran was that she had poor grades and didn't like to study. Her words looked like elementary school students and during class, she was either lying on the table or holding an extra dot curricular book. She read everything. Fiction, foreign books, and magazines. These were well known in class 3.9. Su Yao Guang took a step back, pursed his lips, and looked at Qin Ran as she turned to look for chalk. Instead of going in to get his coat, he glanced at Qin Ran and walked back down without a word. Why did you take so long? Su Yaoguang found a black car on the side road next to the school and got in. They came to Anyu Hotel and Principal Su looked at him sideways. Su Yaoguang turned back and whispered, I went back to get something back in class. Principal Su nodded and stopped speaking. He didn't sit down first but looked at Cheng Wan and Lu Xiaoying, who were sitting next to President Su. He was stunned for a while before saying slowly, Master Wan. Young Master Lu. Cheng Wan held the teacup in his hand, and his long fingers squeezed the lid of the cup to let go of the floating foam, lazy and casual. Lu Xiaoying didn't like drinking tea and was slightly surprised to see him. He raised an eyebrow. I didn't know that young Master Su was also in Yun Cheng. Cheng Wan wasn't old, but he was the eldest son of old Master Cheng and had very high seniority in Beijing, so everyone who knew him called him Master Wan. I suggested that he transfer here. Principal Su let the waiters serve the dish and smiled slightly. There was probably some internal affairs, so Cheng Wan just nodded and didn't probe into their personal matters. Two after half of the meal, Cheng Wan leaned on the back of the chair and put his hands on the table. Elder Su, I hear rumors from the school that you approved a recommendation for a little girl. Yes, I did. Principal Su laughed and looked far away. More than one. More than one. Cheng Wan played with the cup and raised an eyebrow. Let's not discuss this matter. Principal Su shook his head, apparently not wanting to say more. Cheng Wan didn't ask much, but Lu Xiaoying couldn't help it. He took a sip of wine and asked, Elder Su, who is the good successor you were talking about last time? One Elder Su shook his head at this and didn't speak. Lu Xiaoying felt like his heart had been scratched by a kitten and was full of curiosity, but since Elder Su didn't want to reveal it, he didn't force him to either. One Su Yaoguang had been eating and couldn't participate in their dialogue. Only when Lu Xiaoying mentioned his successor, he looked up suddenly at Elder Su. He pursed his lips in disbelief, his fingers white and his knuckles raised. After the meal, Elder Su and young Master Su left first. Lu Xiaoying stayed with Cheng Wan for a while. Manager Wang took a food container and Lu Xiaoying took it. The two men took the elevator down. At the door, Lin Jinxian entered with Feng Cai. The two wanted to talk about something. It just so happened that Lin Wan and Lin Qi also wanted to invite Feng Cai for dinner. As an investor of Lin Jinxian and the son of Mayor Feng, it was enough to make Lin Wan and Lin Qi cautious and respectful. Mayor Feng's style had always been very positive. He didn't easily go to have meals with others, and the Feng family members were not easy to get close to either. With this opportunity, Lin Wan and Lin Qi both attached great importance to it. Feng Cai saw the two and was slightly shocked. He paused and greeted. Mr. Lu. Respectful. As for the two titles, Young Master Lu and Master Wan, he wasn't in the Beijing circle, so he didn't dare call them that. One Cheng Wan was used to prestige in Beijing, and he didn't speak at this time. Only Lu Xiaoying answered him with a smile. He wasn't very familiar with him either, so they just left after saying hello. When they had left, Lin Jinxian said, the two just now. 
Beijing's Qing family and Lu family. Feng Cai lowered his voice. Lin Jinxian took deep breaths for a long while before regaining his breath calmly and expressing his understanding. He had been to Beijing before and knew that the city was full of tigers crouching for opportunities. The person walking casually on the road could be someone you couldn't afford to mess with. The Lin family was not worth a mention in the city. This was one of the reasons why Lin Jinxian insisted on starting a business. Brother, Brother Feng. A light voice sounded. Qin Yu was waiting upstairs and she went downstairs to hold Lin Jinchuan's arm and thoughtfully looked out the door. Who did you just talk to? She had just got off the elevator and had only seen the two's back figures. Feng Cai also bent slightly, quite respectfully. That was Feng Cai, the mayor's son, the person even Lin Jinxian had to be careful of. Two acquaintances. Feng Cai didn't say much to Qin Yu and just smiled. Dot Qin Yu followed the two up the elevator and couldn't help turning back. Upstairs, when he saw Mrs. Feng sitting next to Lin Wan, Feng Cai was stunned. Mom. Mrs. Feng rolled her eyes at him before smiling at Qin Yu. You are, come here, come sit with me. She obviously really liked Qin Yu. Lin Wan and Lin Qi looked at each other in surprise. The next morning, in first middle school. As soon as she entered class 3.9, the sounds inside were almost exploding. It was early reading time, but the windows and doors of the class were surrounded by many people, mostly girls. Xiao Xing frowned. He kicked the door open and was very annoyed. It's so noisy. Oh, you, Master Xiao. You're finally here. His desk mate turned over and was very excited. What? Xiao Xing glanced over and touched his hair. During the conversation, more and more people gathered by the window door. The boy raised his chin to the back, his face flushed. Look back, look back. At this time, members of the student union were taking their books to inspect the posters one by one. Starting from the senior grade. President, what's going on in your class? Someone whispered to Su Yaoguang. Qin Yu seemed to be in a good mood. She smiled and followed behind Su Yaoguang. She saw the buzz in class 3. 9 and smiled. Maybe the poster was drawn well. For she took the book first and walked into class 3.9 through the crowd. Chapter 40 she is Qin Ran you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Qin Ran was very popular in school. She was individualistic and replaced Qin Yu as the campus belle the moment she arrived at first middle school. Qin Ran was pretty and news of her looks didn't just travel across first middle school. Even students from the surrounding schools nearby, Experimental Middle School, Sixth Middle School, and Z High School all skipped lessons to come and see her. HD pictures of Qin Ran were sneakily posted everywhere in school. Even so, there were still praises about her outstanding beauty. Qin Yu used to say that she didn't like anyone paying too much attention to her, but now that all of them were discussing Qin Ran, and even her status as the campus belle had been taken away, she was in a bad mood. What did Qin Ran do to deserve this? She didn't study well and loved to fight. She had a bad attitude and exhibited everything that bad students had. Qin Yu was very clear about the progress report of class 3.9's poster. She had come to find Nye Fei yesterday night, so Nye Fei didn't have time to draw anything. Almost everyone in class 3.9 had their heads tilted or were leaning against their chairs, looking back. The smile on Qin Yu's mouth didn't have time to expand. She saw the contents on the rear board and was dismayed. The people behind laughed and wanted to ask her why she didn't continue walking when they saw the bulletin board and their eyes widened as well. Su Yaoguang went to the student council early in the morning and convened the representatives of various departments for a meeting, and then inspected each class. Yesterday, he was in a hurry and had left without seeing the complete process. Qin Ran had painted two very alive cartoon characters, one of which was colored. He didn't see the full version until now. 
Lynn Siren divided the poster into four parts. She copied two poems and wrote a few high school senior inspirational quotes, leaving a blank space in the middle, which was the countdown to the college entrance examination. The remaining four blank spaces each had a cartoon character. There were four in total, from right to left. The first was in a white shirt and black slacks. Her hair was shredded, her face blushed, and she had a pair of beautiful and expressive eyes. The second was wearing a T-dot shirt, holding a microphone and looking far away. The third was wearing a cotton jacket with a bandage on his arm. The fourth was a punk outfit, with overhead sky spotlights. It was like a growth history. The most shocking thing was that the entire blackboard was painted like a stage effect. The various chalks exactly depicted the spotlight and all the famous poems and characters were perfectly embedded in it. In the bottom row, there were countless little white figures, probably only one finger high, holding light boards. Even though he had taken a glimpse yesterday, Su Yaoguang was still shocked by this grand scene. The student union was silent collectively, and no one spoke. Ah. It's Yen Shi. It's the process of his debut, and the last one is the costume he wore during the latest concert. My Yen Shi. He's so. Handsome. Oh my god. I'm transferring to class 3.9. Yen Shi was the craze now and was absolutely the top three in the entertainment industry. The sound outside was endless. Almost all of them came out to take photos with their mobile phones, tweeted them, and posted them in school. Nye Fei, you turned out to be a hidden fangirl. Impressive. I didn't realize it before, but you are my goddess from today. Nye Fei of class 3.9 was also surrounded. Nye Fei had made a poster for the student union last night, and she just entered the class. She was dumbfounded. No, no, no. I was in the student union last night, you. You can ask Siren and Chin Ran. Those people went to find Chin Ran and Lin Siren instead. Chin Ran was lazily crouching on the table, flipping through a book. She was always in a bad mood when she got up in the morning. The look on her pretty face was cold. Class 3.9 knew her temper, so no one dared to ask her anything. But that didn't prevent them from mentioning Qin Ran. Qin Yu saw Xiao Xing kick off his chair and sit in Qin Ran's front table. He tilted his head and seemed to want to ask her something. No fault, no fault at all. The head of functions waved his hand and was the first to announce this. Qin Yu glanced at Su Yaoguang again and saw that he had his head lowered and was writing very seriously. She gripped her pen tighter. Qin Yu, you are too impressive. The head of functions gave Qin Yu a thumbs up. How did you know that the board of class 3.9 was this good, and you even wanted to come here first? Qin Yu. Dot. Her face was completely ashen. Class 3.9 was really noisy. Chin Ran put on her headphones expressionlessly, her eyebrows furrowed. Dot what was going on with this group of students? She was wearing her school uniform, and her pure white face lifted slightly as if looking out the window. The irritability at the bottom of her eyes burst out, determined to soar into the sky. Ran Ran Lin Siren didn't cover her heart and reluctantly pulled her eyes from the poster on the back until the teaching director came to maintain order. She looked at Qin Ran. Who was this, who could have drawn this? Who was it? Lin Siren regained her senses and looked at Qin Ran, unable to contain her excitement. I don't know. Qin Ran laid down on the table impatiently. Lin Siren whispered, oh, and then said again, Ran Ran, you didn't do any paper last night. She was very attentive and took her papers to Qin Ran to copy. Qin Ran got up again and held a pen with her left hand. She copied the paper, her eyes narrowed and cold and her expression irritable. Class 3.9 became famous for this matter. Few people studied seriously and all looked in the direction of Lin Siren and Qin Ran, whispering. Su Yaoguang was flipping through his English books, 
and everyone around was discussing who painted it. He couldn't help looking at Qin Ran. She was silent and indifferent. He wrote with his pen in his left hand very slowly. But. Su Yaoguang's hand paused. He remembered very clearly that she had used her right hand last night. Early morning classes were short. There were many people in class 3.9. Su Yaoguang went out to buy breakfast. Xiao Sheng looked at Qin Ran lying on the table. She seemed to think it was noisy and covered her head with her school uniform. He touched his nose and went out with Su Yaoguang. After early reading, more people came to class 3.9, and there was no crowding in the corridor. They were either discussing the bulletin board or who painted it. Qin Yu was waiting for them downstairs. She glanced at Xiao Xing walking beside Su Yaoguang, but Xiao Xing didn't look at her and continued talking to Su Yaoguang. I don't know who it is, Xiao Xin whispered. He put his hands in his pockets and cursed with a smile. Qin Ran is always sleeping and ignoring me. I gave her a can of candies for nothing. Su Yaoguang was silent. He had always been indifferent. Few people knew what he was doing at home, and nothing seemed to attract him. At the mention of Qin Ran, he raised an eyebrow. Qin Yu stood aside and pursed her lips. Both of their reactions bothered her. She pretended to be relaxed. This person is very impressive and probably isn't from our school. Otherwise, someone would have come out to claim it. That poster had indeed not been claimed, and Qin Yu couldn't go against her conscience and say that it wasn't nice. The person who painted is a student in our school, Su Yaoguang suddenly said. Xiao Sheng and Qin Yu were both surprised. They stared at him. Dot. Su Yaoguang's eyes were complicated. She is Qin Ran.